Welcome to Lighthouse Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. Please enjoy our annual Christmas program, Celebrate the Savior is Born. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace.
O come, O come, Emmanuel, little drummer boy, joy to the world. Songs of Christmas we sing as praise to God because Jesus Christ lives in our hearts. Today, as Christians, we celebrate with joy the season of Christmas because a Savior has been born. Yes, Jesus is joy in our world. He resonates in our human spirit every day along with peace, hope, and love because of his finished work on the cross. Praise God he sent to us such a wonderful gift in the manger at Bethlehem. Still, too many lost people have yet to open this wonderful gift in the midst of their hearts. Jesus, our hope, our joy through a Savior being born once walked beside man in the Garden of Eden as man's perfect, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Till man willfully chose to let sin pollute his own soul and separate his human spirit from God, thereby giving the devil access and authority to steal, kill, and destroy this intimate divine relationship. Ever since this enemy of heaven since that day every generation has took looked for a sign a sign of finding their way back to their loving creator God a relationship providing hope for their eternal souls many false prophets creating deceiving doctrines of religion have failingly offered false hope while being void of Jesus many souls have lived and died discovering after life that their very own soul sadly would be lost eternally forever and imprisoned in a deceiving devil's hell. Many centuries have passed. The sign has been given. A Savior was born in Bethlehem as the way, the truth, and the life for our salvation. Still today, lost men search for a sign, a wonderful sign that might give them instant peace in their weary and lonely hearts. Thank God that in his divine wisdom, he orchestrated the Christmas season. An annual time celebrated throughout the whole world when all of mankind can find at least temporary peace as they pause their souls to look at a baby in a manger. Christmas, another chance to welcome this Savior being born in their hearts. Jesus, the only way, the only bridge to God's own heart. 700 years before the manger, in troubled times just like today, the prophet Isaiah penned the greatest prophecy from God to man about the hope of his coming to the manger. Isaiah prophesied, The Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Emmanuel, meaning God with us, beginning with a babe in a manger. Our loving Father God sent this eternal sign of divine hope, peace, love, and joy that no reasonable man could possibly doubt. God in all of his wisdom permanently set this sign, this miraculous moment, so that time itself would forever be calendarized by the hope of his coming, both through the manger, a Savior being born all time before Christ, B.C., but also calendarizes the hope of His coming again to receive us back to heaven after all time expires, B.C. and A.D., the allotted time for man after Christ's death. Now, uniquely calendared as a sign in eternity's history, is Jesus Himself as King, the Son of the living God, being born to man for our salvation. See, I believe God is saying to us today, not only have I given you a sign countered by the virgin birth of my son Emmanuel, but I've also given you a miraculum king over death, hell, and the grave to forever be enthroned in your hearts as peace in a troubled world as you await my return. Isaiah continues to prophesy about the hope of his coming to the whole world. For unto us a child is born to be the atonement that forever reconciles us back to God. One sacrifice for sin for all mankind, mediator and redeemer of his people. Unto us a son is given. Amazing grace that God loved us so much that he gave his one and only son so every person that believes in him would not perish but have eternal life. And his government, every trouble of our lives will be placed upon his shoulder. See, we are reborn. We are reborn to 
royal dignity. With Jesus as king of saints ruling in the hearts of his people, this government was delegated to him from his father. With eternal ruling and with eternal peace, his shoulders are strong. No matter the circumstances of your life today, his kingdom and his government was originally designed to reign in power eternally in your lives. Jesus came to bear every weight of your troubles on his shoulders as a glorious king, a div a, the divine hope of all your tomorrows. By the manger, he exemplified the Son. Through the cross and the empty grave and the repentant heart, Jesus becomes the ruling eternal king, a reign without end, Emmanuel, God with us eternally. Isaiah prophesied to the hope of his coming in you that each of you would live life praising him with certain enthronement names as king in the throne room of your hearts. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. For you to enthrone him as a wonderful counselor, you must give him kingship. And giving kingship, Jesus in a miraculous moment of reconciliation will change all of your eternity, past, present, and future to see him as your absolute wonder in life. The word miraculum is a Latin word for the object of wonder. Jesus is the object of all your wonder. Man's soul in a, is an object of wonder itself. It will always be in a state of wonder until it finds this relationship with this wonderful personal Jesus. A supernatural wonder with loving deeds. Having miraculous involvement in your everyday lives with merciful words of eternal life. Daily disclosing the plans of salvation through His Holy Spirit. King Jesus, a, a wonderful counselor to all your troubles. The incarnation of perfect wisdom. As Jesus, we enthrone him as the mighty God in this earthen, earthen vessel. And by his indwelling Holy Spirit, Jesus now has the capacity to rule with all the fullness of the deity in a personal and active relationship in us. In every detail of our lives, Jesus is mighty. So mighty that he delegates us as ambassadors of heaven with the freedom to bind all the powers of hell and loose the powers of heaven into our everyday lives. King Jesus. A mighty God ruling heaven and earth while giving us his divine Holy Spirit to rule in our hearts. As king, we enthrone him as everlasting father. The Hebraic meaning of everlasting father is father of eternity, creator of everything, father of, of, of time and eternity, creator of the ages, eternal father. The word eternal father means not only without end, but also without beginning. The construction of the phrase everlasting father is a primary noun, meaning he is our father forever. See, it was a truly a miraculous moment when our everlasting father adopted each of us into his kingdom, supplying us with everlasting provision, clothing us with everlasting raiment, redeeming us with everlasting salvation and rebirth in our very spirit with the everlasting love in his presence king jesus a very personal everlasting father and lastly as king we enthrone him as our prince of peace he's the author of our peace he's the prince of our life he vicariously lives in us with peace and joy in the holy ghost and for jesus says to you today my peace I give unto you, King Jesus, the Prince of Peace for your life. And my greatest hope today is that you find peace. Place your world upon the shoulders of King Jesus. He's the gift of wonder. He's a counselor of wisdom. He's the mighty God over all your weaknesses. He's the eternal Father with you forever. He's the peace of your yesterdays, today, and tomorrows. The sign that we cannot miss seeing in this life is the God who came in a manger to live as king in our hearts. Jesus is our personal king as wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father and prince of peace. May we all enthrone him today as king of hearts. Jesus is Christmas. Christ, meaning the anointed one, must meaning to sin. Jesus was sent to be the king of your heart. 
And today, he is here. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth.
is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect land? This sleeping child you're holding is the all about. That's why we celebrate today. The greatest gift God ever gave this world was His Son, Jesus. The Scripture says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Love came down. John said it like this. John said, And the word, word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Aren't you grateful for that this morning? The word became flesh. When this world was so lost in sin, separated from a holy God, sinking deep without hope, totally lost, no way possible to save ourselves and so far away from the Father. God loved us so much that He sent His Son to come down to us when we were helpless to reach up to Him. When we couldn't get to God, God came down to us. Jesus came. God the Son came. The only begotten Son came. And God sent Him to us because He loves you so much. The Father's love for you this morning is so great. And we hope that you feel it. He became like us so we could become like Him. One author said it like this, The Son of God became the Son of Man in order that the sons of men might become sons of God. Aren't you glad He came? In Christ, God entered into humanity. He became a human being. That blows our minds. We can't wrap our mind around that. He took on the same nature as humanity, but without sin. He was sinless. Christ left heaven. He entered our world. He came as a baby, born of a virgin. The eternal God became a human. Paul writes it like this. He says, Who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even the death of the cross what did he do when he came what did it cost him well he willingly he let go of his privileges and glory in heaven to come to earth in order that you and I could be saved. He emptied himself. He laid aside his heavenly glory, his position, his riches, his rights, and the use of his divine attributes. He remained fully divine and he took on a human nature with its temptations, humiliations, and weaknesses, yet he was without sin. Hebrews says it like this, for we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Aren't you glad He knows what you feel? Aren't you glad this morning that He is acquainted with the limitations and the challenges of our humanity? He became human. The Son of God became the Son of Man. He didn't just come. John says, he dwelt among us. He tabernacled among us. He moved in next door. 
He walked with them. He talked with them. He ate with them. He lived with them. He came to identify with mankind in every aspect of human life from birth all the way to death. The Word became a real person. He could be seen. He could be heard. He could be touched. He came for you. Humanity and deity were united in Him. He entered humbly into humanity. He experienced the limitations of the human experience. He hungered. He was thirsty. He wept. He was fatigued. He was weary. He groaned within. He suffered. He shed His blood. He died and He was buried. The Word became flesh. The Word, Logos, the personal manifestation, not a part of the divine nature, but the whole deity. He was fully God and He became flesh. Humanity and deity all in one person. He was the Son of God and the Son of Man in one person. He was Christ the Messiah and He was Jesus of Nazareth. He was also the Ancient of Days who said, Before Abraham was, I am. Jesus said, I thirst in His humanity. But in His deity, He said, I am the water of life. Jesus said, Give me to drink. Yet on the same occasion, He says, Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. He was beaten with stripes in His humanity, but with His stripes we are healed. He said, I can do nothing of myself, but without Him was not anything made that was made. Another had to carry His cross. Simon of Cyrene had to carry His cross, but He upholdeth all things by the word of His power. Do you see the deity of our Lord Jesus Christ in His humanity? He, he increased in wisdom and stature. Yet He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We see His humanity when His mother fed Him bread and gave Him drink. We see His deity when He declared, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. We see His humanity when He slept in a boat. But we see His deity when He stood up in that boat and He said, Peace. Be still and the wind and the waves were silenced we see his humanity when he wept at the tomb of Lazarus but we see his deity when he cried Lazarus come forth and the dead man came back to life have you come to life this morning have you experienced him he came for you he was sentenced to death by a Roman governor but he was the king of kings and the Lord of Lords he said in John 12, 27, Now is my soul troubled. Yet he was the Prince of Peace. On the cross he cried, Why hast thou forsaken me? Yet he promises you and I today. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And in that same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, and that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was the angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom he is pleased.
in sin and never pining till he appeared and the soul felt his word a thrill of hope a weary world rejoice
hum was my fault. I was trying to get myself ready, so I turned on my microphone too soon. Um, Father, forgive me for forgetting your majesty. I'm the pastor of this church. And I take it for granted too much. I humbly submit myself and apologize for taking it for granted. You are wonderful. You are marvelous. You are the mighty God. If nobody in this room responds with me, God, I'm so sorry. <sighs> Christmas. It's amazing. I'm just going to give myself a moment to get my stuff together. Because if the song hasn't preached the gospel, then I don't know what gospel you're trying to listen to. In this morning's message, the gospel of Christ has been communicated through song. It's been communicated through scripture. And it's been communicated through speech. I've listened to that song probably 40 times over the last week and a half, two weeks, as I've been preparing for today's message. And that song got me every time. But it wasn't until it was all put together that I had to come to a place in my heart that I said, God, I've taken you for granted. And I don't ever want to do that again. You know, as I think about that song, you know, I don't believe a single one of us, myself included, I don't think a single one of us are here by accident. I can't see if we've got a lot of visitors or maybe the, the family of God is in the room and you're just part of Lighthouse. You might be joining us online and I trust that that translated over at the online performance as well. But this morning we, we celebrate the Savior is born. But it's more than a once a year performance program or presentation. It's more than all of the rehearsals. It's, it's more than all of the practices and all of the invitations to the special guests we wanted to hear come sing. It's more than even the joy that we get for once in a while having our kids on the platform. Didn't they do amazing? But it's more than that, guys. Despite what people believe about Jesus... Despite the redundancy and the tradition that many consider this message this morning, despite the, the hustle and the bustle and the rush and the push and the pull of all that this holiday has a tendency to do, despite all of that, this morning's message declared God's fulfilled promise that he was faithful to provide hope and it's available to all. Over the course of the last couple of weeks, I've had the privilege of speaking on this very topic called Celebrate. And as we've been ministering from different passages of Scripture, there's been one keynote passage of Scripture that I was fortunate enough to that, that Pastor Barry and Pastor Candy didn't grab from me. It's been the foundation for my entire series. 
out of the book of Luke chapter 2. And out of this passage, out of Luke chapter 2, verse number 10 has probably become one of my top 10 favorite verses in all the Bible. And it's just happened over the last month, month and a half. The Bible tells us in Luke chapter 2, verse number 10, if you don't have your Bible or electronic, you can see it right there. It says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings. <laughs> I don't think they cried. <laughs> I bring you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people. And as I read that verse, and as I've looked at this verse repetitively and repetitively and repetitively, and you'll get it one more time next week. As I've looked at this verse, this declaration of the angels. Thanks, John, for putting angels up there. That's pretty cool. There's three things I want to share with you this morning. We're going to come back, and we're going to have a closing song, but... But there's really three very important things, and I've highlighted them there for you. What did the angels declare? Number one, they declared that it was a message that provided good news. It wasn't a bad, it wasn't a bad message. It was a good message. It was a phenomenal message. It was a grand message. It was a great message. You know, Pastor Barry, in his message, in his portion of the sermon, he talked about the promise and the prophetic voice of Isaiah. And he began to talk about the sign and the gift for mankind that Jesus would make a way for all of man. You know, when I, when I read about that good news, Jesus, in, in his in his in who he was and when we give Jesus his rightful place in our heart we position ourselves to receive all those things that Pastor Barry talked about I was thinking to myself as I was trying to wrap up a message and just try to wrap up a thought for you this morning wonderful counselor you know I I, I how many, how many of you know that all of us need somebody to talk to once in a while? Even if you just need somebody to have a conversation with. He's the, he's the one. Jesus can be your counselor. He can be that person that speaks hope into your life. When he, when he made the comment about mighty God, you know, I... We all, are, we, there, we all need God. But what he said is Jesus was the access and the avenue and the availability to become that mighty God you and I both need. I, I realize that when Pastor Barry was talking about everlasting father, for some in the room, it, it might be a difficult moment because some of you didn't have such a good one here on earth. And if you're a bad one in the room, we can make that right by the end of the service. But you know what? Some of us need a good example. Some of us need someone that we can look to and say, would you just be my dad? Would you just be my dad? How many of you know? How many of you know how precious that is when a child climbs up into his father's arms and there's nothing that that father needs to do except just hold baby? And some of us just need an everlasting father that loves you more than you know. And then I was thinking about this one when he made the comment about everlasting peace. How many of you know we live in a world where there's a lot of turmoil going on? And, and because we live in this world that all this turmoil and all of this commotion and all of this stuff that yesterday it used to be good and now it's bad and what was bad is now good and what was right is now wrong and what was wrong is now right and we don't understand Jesus was the solution and he was the provider of good news but he was also that peace that we need see even as Christians we need peace our mind doesn't turn off sometimes and the ultimate peace is Jesus 
You see, the second thing that I kind of saw in this verse was something that most of us need to understand, and that is this. In Luke chapter 2, the middle portion, it says, he says, not only does he bring good tidings or good news, but guess what? Of joy. And it's not just passing joy. It's great joy. That word great is a word mega. Means a, a big amount. Huh? How many of you like to get the mega gulp or the, 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 the mega size? Just mega size it for me, right? We're all on a diet. We'll get the mega size, but make sure you make it a diet Coke, right? But, but, but Jesus wasn't just going to give us a little bit of joy. He didn't just say, hey, here's enough to get you by. Here's just enough to get you by. He wanted to give you enough that it was running over and pouring out. See, because what I've learned from this verse is that, 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 that in this verse, it was a message. The angels were declaring that it was a message that produced something. And that was a great joy. You know, we, we, we receive messages every day. And I was trying to give an example of getting news. How many of you know sometimes we can get news and it's not so good? But this is the kind of news that was an abundance of news. You know, we receive messages every day. For example, you know, if, if we've been feeling poorly, the, the good news is we could get the doctor's prognosis. But, but finding out what's wrong isn't necessarily something that produces joy. How many of you know what I'm talking about? The news that Jesus brought did, wasn't just news. It produced joy that was abundant. The message that the angels had was both good and filled with joy. Our world is full of disruptive, negative news that brings sadness. Most people don't even care anymore. The result is people are sad. I can go to the mall and I can go to the store and you see it on the faces of people. Of this sorrow that's in their lives. And, and I was thinking to myself, the enemy has succeeded. The enemy has succeeded, and, and it was quoted earlier, to, that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But for those of us that heed the good tidings of great joy, guess what? The enemy doesn't have the right to overcome and disrupt our lives. Because Pastor Candy was talking about this great message of love. And I have these little moments. And, and, and just to give you insight into Bob Keek for a minute, I, 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 I have snarky moments even with myself. Because I was thinking to myself, all we need is love. And I thought the Beatles had it right. But the original song was written by the angels. The, the, the original song that came from heaven, it, all you need is love is just a remake of what God said. And I'm thinking to myself, all of the, we, we sing this song and, and, and Crystal and, and, and um, uh, Crystal and, and, and Suzanne and, and, and Lisa, I'm trying to remember everybody that was involved in that one song. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. There's a thing that's been going around social media. Mary, did you know? And as I was, as I got this, I, I saved it in my, in my Facebook and I thought I would get to it quicker than I did just a moment ago. But Mary, did you know? When you start thinking about all the things that Jesus made available for you and I, Mary, did you know that, that, you would, that your son would come to make everything right? It's going to be okay, Joseph. It's going to be okay, Arvin. He, he came to, to calm the storms in our lives. He, he came to, 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 to settle the things that are, that, are, that are rough and tumbling in our lives. He came to heal us. I don't know, you might be dealing with something going on in your physical body, but he didn't just come to heal the physical body. He came to heal the, the mind. and He came to heal the spirit. He didn't just come to, to, to bring hope to the hopeless. He came to feed the multitudes. Every single one of us, we, we have to be fed. He came to raise the dead. When you read about all the things that he did and all of the things that Pastor Candy mentioned when she was talking about the transition from deity to humanity, I thought to myself, when she communicated the manifestations of God's love was amazing. 
because it came to save us. It came to us in the form of a person. And he came to live with us that we might understand how to live this life. The last thought that I was thinking about this morning is that Jesus came because Jesus became like us so that so that we could become like him. There, there, the, the, the problem that I see so often is so many people say, well, I got to get things right first. I got to fix this. I got to change that. I got to stop doing this. When, when in all honesty, in this verse, we can go to the last portion of that verse. In Luke chapter 2, verse number 10, it says this. This message of good tidings, of great joy, was not just for some. It wasn't just for those that were perfect. It wasn't those that had it all together and buttoned up. I thought, I thought to myself, I came up today and I thought, you know, I, I was going to wear a tie. I was going to have all this. I thought, no, Pastor Barry's not going to wear a tie. Sure enough, Pastor Candy wore a dress. Pastor Barry wore a tie. And I'm looking like a schlep. But, but he came for all of us. He came for you and for me. Say, he came for me. Because the last portion of this thought that I have is the angels declared and it was a message that was purposed for you. It was a message that was purposed for you and me. There have been so many times in, in my life that I needed to hear good news. How many of you gotten bad news before? And you just said, God, I just need some good news. Guess what? You came to church today and I've got some for you. Because you know what? There are times in my life where the joy is absent. I'm being honest. And because of that, I, I've dealt in my past in 1995, I, it's 1979, I dealt with an incredible loss. And as a result of that loss, it grew into a depression that I didn't know how to get out of in 1995. I'm sitting in a Walmart parking lot. I bought a book called The Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer because I couldn't turn my mind off. And the message of good news with great joy is something that is available. Now, mind you, you don't have to be a pastor. You can be a plumber. You can be a teacher, an architect. And God can use you because the message is for you. It's not a, uncommon for me as a pastor or just me as a person to meet people on the street that are broken, they're hurting, they're discouraged and they're frustrated. They're angry or they're lonely. And there's so many more adjectives that I can use to describe people. The angels provided a message that was available to everyone. That's you and that's me. And the angel announced a Savior that every single one of us need to declare. I said it at the very beginning of my message. I don't know where you are on the Jesus spectrum. But I do know this. He wants to be in love with you that you feel him. I told a friend of mine once who was trying to minister to their atheist family, and I said, you know, the coolest thing is Jesus was so in love with them that he gave them the choice to not have to be in love back. I think that's the greatest form of love ever, giving you the freedom to not love back. Jesus came as a child but lived in such a way that my imperfections my insecurities, my uncertainties can only be overcome in him. I, I thought this and I shared it with the team last night. He entered this world humble and helpless, but he exited this world with power and purpose, and that's you. You know, the message that was offered by the angels was for every person that's in this room. Every individual here. 
There's a verse that I want to read to you as I close my portion of this message. And the team is going to come back and we're going to close out our sermon, just our, 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 our program, our message for you this morning. In Revelation chapter 3 and verse number 20, I'll try to step aside so you can see it. It says, listen, I'm standing and knocking at your door. If you hear my voice, open the door and I will come in and we'll eat together. Jesus wants place in your heart. You might be in this room and I just want you to be honest with me. You might say to me, Pastor Bob, I don't have a relationship with Jesus, but I want one. Or you might be in the room and you say, Pastor Bob, I have a relationship with I've accepted him as my, Lord, my, my Savior, but not really as my Lord, and I want to get that right. If you're one of those two people right now, it's in the dark. Not mo most people won't even know who you are. But would you raise your hand real quickly, because I want to pray with you. You just simply say to me, Pastor Bob, I want to get things right with God. There's a hand right there. There's a hand. Is there any other hands that are going to go up? I see a couple of hands. There's one. There's one. Four hands. I counted four hands. Anybody else? Because we're going to pray this together. Anybody else? The service was for you. It was totally for you. Would you all repeat this prayer with me? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. I thank you for the wonderful counselor. I thank you that you are mighty God. I thank you that you are the Prince of Peace. And in my world, right now, I want to accept Jesus more than my Savior, but my Lord. Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Wash me clean. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you came and died and rose again that I might have life and have it abundant. Forgive me of all my trespasses. Help me in my tomorrows to live for you with all of my being. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, the Bible says, for those of you that raised your hand, or maybe you didn't, but you prayed that prayer for the very first time, the Bible says that you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. Behold, old things are passed away. Everything has become new. That's cool, isn't it? That right there is probably the bottom line of everything we're trying to accomplish today. I want to encourage you this morning. If you accepted Jesus or you rededicated your life to Jesus this morning, please make sure you tell somebody before you leave today. If you want to come tell me, that's fine. If you want to tell your spouse, your friend, your neighbor, you know, maybe tell an outlaw. Who knows? Maybe they'll come to Jesus. In-laws, outlaws, you know how that goes. But I want to give it back to the worship team and the band and the choir for one more presentation for you. But church, would you celebrate with me with those that accepted or rededicated their life to the Lord this morning? Let's do that.
awesome. If you'll do me a favor and just have a seat for just a second. Where's all my kids? All my kids, come up here that were in the performance. Come on up here. You need to stand on stage. Come on, you got to take one final bow. Where's my kids? Make a move. Run, run, run. Give it up for our kids. Amen. Where's Silas? Man, here comes the drum. I, you know what? Silas doesn't fit the bill for a little drummer boy. He's a tall drummer boy, but we're grateful that we had a Silas here. I want to make some honor. I just want to honor some folks. If you'll honor them with me, I've got a few announcements. We'll take the offering. We're going to do it a little bit differently today. But, but how many of you want to just give one more opportunity just to thank the, the choir and the worship team? How about the kids? How about the kids? All right, all right, all right. How about Joseph, our guest on the piano? And Suzanne in the red glasses for the pipes. Where, where, where's Eric? You're sitting down. Get up here. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. Give it up for Eric. How about the band in the back? You can't see the band. How about the audio and the video department in the back? Those guys are amazing. How about our children's workers that watch the kids during all the performances? Aren't they amazing? I want to give it up also to Arvin and Lisa and Bryson for putting together this production. They did an amazing job. I, I, okay, Bryson, how many of you would like to see a little more choir? That's on you. Crystal, for the children's choir. Crystal with the children's choir. Where he is, John, for the set design. John, right here for the set design. They did an amazing job. They did an amazing job. We're going to get out of here in just a second. A couple of things I just want to announce to you. Hey, if you're a church member, uh, if you're new to Lighthouse, do we have any guests or visitors? This is your first time here. Never been here before. Raise your hand real quick. There's a few of you. Great. Awesome. That's great. The rest of you all have been here before, which means you better be back next week. That's all I'm telling you. All right. So, hey, find out all about Lighthouse, all about the things that are going on. You can go to that QR code right there. That's called LH Access. It's our bulletin. A couple of things we want to make mention to you. Uh, the top part was today, so it doesn't matter anymore. But the bottom is next weekend. We're going to finish this Celebrate series with a candlelight Christmas service on Saturday at 11 and Sunday at 11. So you can pick and choose which service you want to be at. They're the same service. They're one hour long, and we're going to have candlelight communion. We want you to be there this coming weekend. Grab a card. Invite somebody. It'll be a lot of fun. Then, following that, the 30th and the 31st, we've got 24 hours of prayer. If you have not been a part of Lighthouse's 24 hours of prayer, you got a text. If you're a church member, you got a text this week. And I, I didn't have a lot of y'all fill it out. I'd love to have all of us at least find one hour that we can be here and just pray. If we have 75 in one and none in another, then one of the pastors will just have to hang out. But I, I just want everybody to be involved in this. Please sign up to be a part of that. Then the following week is what we've got prayer week. Now, I think I'm going to change the name and I'm going to make Emma change the title. We're going to call it Seek Week because I really want us to start 2023 seeking God. So on Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock of the first week of January, we're going to have a prayer week. And now just so you know, we've got guests every night. We've got guests every night that are going to be a part of that. So it's not going to be me and Pastor Barry and Pastor Candy just being redundant in some things. I want to make this special as we kick off a brand new year. How many of you are going to promise to be here for Seek Week? Come on. I need everybody to be here for Seek Week. It's only one hour long, 7 to 8, Monday through Friday of that week. Also, church members, if you did not pick up a, bull, uh, 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 a Welcome to Lighthouse informational, this is also for you because we are starting brand new connect groups the second week of January. Everybody ought to be in a small group. That's part of our culture, part of what we believe. We've got some incredible new groups that are starting this term. I think the most groups we've ever had, I think we got 16 groups right now, which is a lot. It's going to be a lot of fun. You just have to pick one. All right. Enough is enough. That was like blah, blah, blah. All right. We're going to do offering a little bit different. I've got offering, gentlemen. i got my ushers in the back as you leave. Church folk, I don't need to tell you what to do. You know what to do, right? So you take your money, put it in the bucket, because you already planned on doing that. How many of you already planned on doing that? For those of you that I need to convince, 
it's a good thing. It's a good thing. The, 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 the wise men, when they came to Jesus, the thing that they did is they brought offerings of gold and frankincense and myrrh. I want all of you to give in the offering. We're going to pray over that. We're going to pray with a dismissal. They're going to sing us out. I'm going to count you down, and we're going to, cre- we're going to yell hallelujah and walk out with a shout, okay? So here we go. Let's just pray over the offering, and then we'll do the countdown. I'll give it back to Bryson. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this offering. We thank you, Lord, for the anointing that's been on this worship group, this moment that we had today. God, I pray, Lord, that you are pleased that we just didn't perform, but God, that there was something that happened in heaven. God, I pray for every person in this room, as we walk out the door, we would celebrate Christ this week. God, I pray for this offering, cause it to be a miracle, in Jesus' name. Now, three, two, one, hallelujah, you ready? Three, two, one, hallelujah!